God damn it, guys. Damn it! Just gonna tear it off like a band-aid, guys. <sighs> We're gonna get through it together. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another movie review as always I really do appreciate you guys stopping by we're talking about Venom let there be carnage for f sake Why why yeah, you guys can tell I mean aside from what tea turtle might be telling you I am NOT overly excited to talk about Venom let there be carnage today This is of course the sequel to the product that was 2018's Venom Ruben Fleischer curiously does not return to direct the sequel and it instead is helmed by Andy Serkis who let me just preface is a talent I really 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 respect and it once again stars Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock slash Venom another actor whom over this last decade since I first saw him in Warrior I've really come to respect and it also introduces us to one of the most underrated actors I think working right now Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy slash Carnage this movie should have been freaking awesome because this was one of the most brutal comic book rivalries of all time gee shouldn't this movie have been rated R yeah spoiler alert it's fucking not so after finding a host body, an investigative reporter Eddie Brock, played by Tom Hardy, the alien symbiote known as Venom must face a new enemy known as Carnage, the alter ego of serial killer Cletus Cassidy, played by Woody Harrelson. So I really was not looking forward to this movie at all, as you can tell from my tone, because I really was not the biggest fan of the 2018 film when it first came out. And if you guys like that film, and I know there's a bunch of people out there that love the first Venom film, that's totally fine. Chances are, if you loved the first film, you'll probably love the second film even more. But considering the talent involved, I feel like at least as a casual viewer, that Let There Be Carnage should have at least surpassed the first film. But let me just say that the best part of the first movie was Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock slash Venom. And likewise here, I enjoyed Tom Hardy the most in Let There Be Carnage as well. And Tom Hardy clearly has got some of the Tom Hardy mumble thrown in there into his dialogue, which is horrendously written by the way. My god, this is some of the worst dialogue all year. But Hardy is certainly making the most out of what he is given. There are clearly moments in here where your theater will probably burst into laughter, particularly when Venom is making Eddie breakfast, which admittedly I did kind of chuckle at. And I can also admire how they gave Michelle Williams as Anne more stuff to do in this film as opposed to being a total waste of character in the first movie. But let's be honest, yeah, Tom Hardy is really what holds this movie together and saves it from being a complete, total disaster. And even though the first movie severely disappointed me, Unlike these filmmakers, I've learned from my past mistakes. I went in to let there be carnage with absolutely zero expectations. So that way, when the credits rolled for this film, I couldn't feel insanely down on myself like I did three years ago after the first Venom ended. Which brings me to what doesn't work about this film, and god almighty, where do I even begin? Let There Be Carnage is a mess and a half. Might as well just start off with this story. This is honestly one of the most incoherent messes of a plot I've seen all year long. There are just way too many moving pieces trying to coincide with one another that it just makes everything feel so rushed and contrived. Like, for example, the symbiote goes through this existential crisis which results in him going to this rave being covered in glow sticks in what I consider to be the greatest written scene all year long. <laughs> Yeah, this is giving the Spider-Man 3 dance sequence a run for its money. You want something dumber than emo Tobey Maguire dancing in the streets? Put some f***ing glow sticks on the alien symbiote, why don't ya? Thank you so much for that. And there's also this romance between Cletus Cassidy and this girl he meets in the institution he grew up in, played by Naomi Harris, who is atrociously bad in this film. Like, it is startling how horrendous she was. And that's especially after I just rewatched Skyfall and Spectre within the last week, and she she kills it in both of those films. It was very jarring to see this because as I've alluded to, she is an extremely talented actress. This performance as the Screamer was so unlike her. I don't know what the hell she was thinking doing this role, but I don't know. I just really was not a fan. But this romance between the villains just feels so rushed. And this is probably where the 90 minute runtime will come back to sting this film later. I really didn't feel like the script allowed these big events enough time to breathe and really let things sink in. Now I don't mind a film that's fast paced, but there's also such a thing as being too fast paced. Venom Let There Be Carnage was like boom 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 
boom, boom, boom. Like, bro, slow down. Please take a chill pill, screenwriters. God, I need to take a chill pill thinking about this piece of shit. Which, by the way, that slow down note also goes to Andy Serkis as a director. So listen, guys, I really love this guy. I mean, considering everything he's done within the motion capture realm, especially with Planet of the Apes, he is an absolute legend. So his involvement with this film at least had me somewhat curious as to what he could do here. But what he can do is basically show us some really shoddy camera work to the point where I had absolutely no f***ing idea what was going on. Especially as it goes with a lot of the combat sequences. There are way too many jump cuts in here and that's maybe because oh i don't know this action stuff is brutal and this movie egregiously once again has a pg-13 rating like if it's just for monetary gain that's why you're pg-13 like especially if you have this guy in your film like god i hate saying this but this movie better have been rated r but lo and behold it's not. And I sure as hell was not taking the bait this time. There is absolutely no reason other than bullshit that you can give me to try and actually convince me that a PG-13 rating in a movie involving carnage? There is no way this is a good idea. Look at movies like Deadpool, Logan, Joker. All of them rated R. And guess what, guys? I got news for you. Movies like Joker especially made a shit ton of money at the box office despite us having to be carded at the ticket counter. So there is absolutely no excuse and no defense for Sony this time. Venom Let There Be Carnage should have been rated R and it should have been f***ing brutal. There should have been gore all over the screen. But no. No there is not. They bite people's heads off and they always cut away. Like ah oh, this movie annoyed me. This action to me felt like the symbiote was trying to break the chains and go completely unhinged and massacre poor people all over the place. You know just be heading people by eating their brains but it felt like he and his adversary were handcuffed with titanium shackles that made an annoying sound every time they tried to go off the rails and don't get me wrong the first movie has this exact same issue which is why i'm so much more upset at this film because as a sequel it really should have learned from the first film's mistakes and the action just feels so tame in this one because it really does feel like the studio severely shackled these filmmakers and these visual artists and believe me they could have reached their full potential they could have made carnage leap off the comic book presses onto the silver screen but no not in all of his bloody glory we get a different kind of carnage the carnage caused by horrible cgi and teddy bear action <sighs> now that i've got that out of the way guys let's address the elephant in the room carnage himself played by woody harrelson when he did appear on screen he looked fantastic the sharp teeth the red skin the literal shoulder blades i'm so sorry pun absolutely intended but guys point being he looked really really cool for a whole 15 minutes when your big selling point of this movie finally being able to see this incarnation of cletus cassidy played by woody harrelson who is trying his damnedest to bless his heart he really really is but when he's only in this thing for not even one sixth of the movie that's a problem in its own right. And Christ almighty, his backstory as a serial killer could have been a movie of its own. But it just feels so damn rushed. It ironically feels exactly like Venom's arc in Spider-Man 3 insanely rushed like they wanted to get to the monster with the sharp fangs when will they ever learn it's almost like these screenwriters refused to let things simmer and they were just impatient to get to the big action climax which isn't even all that exciting anyway all wrapping up with what i consider one of the most deflating results to a superhero movie of all time <sighs> No spoilers, but I could not help it in the theater but roll my eyes when I saw how this film concluded. Like, it is just so ridiculous. This movie is obviously a cluster f man. Please, please, I encourage you, do not waste your time. If you were to force me to pick which one of these is the better film between this and 2018, like... God, I don't know, maybe this one. But honestly, saying this movie is the better of the two Venom movies is like saying eating vomit is better than eating s***. Either way you won't enjoy it. I'm gonna give Venom Let There Be Carnage a D. The only thing that saves this movie from an F is Tom Hardy and his efforts, but clearly I did not like this movie at all. This is one of my least favorite films of the entire year. Go watch Shang-Chi again. That is definitely worth your time a lot more. It's definitely a better way to spend $10 and 90 minutes of your life, because Shang-Chi is a movie that actually does deserve your money. Now, if there's one thing you want me to say that I actually think is really exciting about this movie, I encourage you guys to stay Stay tuned for the mid credit scene because my audience, when they saw what I'm thinking of, they absolutely 
burst and exploded with excitement. Again, of course, I will not spoil its contents, but all I'll say is this mid credit scene actually makes me hopeful. Makes me hopeful that Tom Hardy's Venom can actually be in a good movie next time. If you know, guys, you know. Of course, <laughs> guys, I know I just ranted your brains out, but I really do thank you so much for clicking on the video and stopping by. Um, this was a very, very cathartic video for me. I really hope it was as cathartic for you as it was for myself. But of course, guys, this is all just my opinion. If you guys liked Venom, Let There Be Carnage, that is totally, totally cool. It's all subjective. Let me know, make some noise down in the comments section below what you thought of Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And also, let me know what your favorite Spider-Man movie of all time is, and let me know who your favorite Spider-Man villain is. Because as you guys know, I love creating this content and discussing all things cinema and entertainment with you guys. If these sound like topics you want to keep up to date along with me, then do consider hitting that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can. It's totally free to you guys, and it would be really, really beneficial to help this content along. Because this channel is on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I am still so floored by your guys' support up to this point even. But let's see if we can get there by the end of the year. I think we can do it. And guys, be sure to hit that thumbs up on your way out, regardless of what you thought of my opinion and all that, whether or not you agree with me. Because this really, really helps get this content out there as well. And as always, guys, stay tuned for more exciting content hitting this channel very, very soon. I just uploaded my first installment in this year's Halloween special. I just reviewed Frankenstein. That was a very fun video to make for you guys. Next up on the docket coming out sometime early next week is going to be Misery, the based on the Stephen King novel starring James Caan, Kathy Bates. The only Stephen King movie to ever win an Oscar, by the way. And also, I'm going to be reviewing all the brand new movies that are not just hitting theaters, but also coming out on streaming like Netflix with The Guilty. But you guys are the best. Sincerely, once again, thank you all so much for tuning into the video. It really, really does mean the world. With all that being said, back talk, commence.